Let's get some more perspective on where the economy is going, what the 5% tenure yield means for the markets and the economy. Morgan Stanley Wealth Management Chief Investment Officer Lisa Shallot and Citigroup Global Chief Economist Nathan Sheets joins us. So, Nathan, what, which is it? What, what is happening with the consumer? By our reckoning, the U.S. consumer has just been exceptionally strong. And a good part of this was uh, pent-up demand for services coming out of the pandemic. And uh, lots of households were in a place where uh, they uh, hadn't gone on vacations and uh, had entertainment and leisure activities outside their homes for several years. Once the pandemic abated, uh, uh, households barreled out and have spent vigorously over the last uh, couple of years. More recently, maybe some of that is starting to soften, but we're starting to see good spending pick up. So it, it, it is a very, uh, very ebullient U.S. consumer sector that we're seeing. That was reinforced by the retail sales data that we got uh, that we got last week, and by our reckoning, it's really hard at this stage to see much evidence of uh, of a meaningful slowing in the consumer. And it really is supported by by the tight labor market. There's a dynamic consumer spending hitting the labor market, supporting uh, demand for labor, pushing up wages, and then supporting more consumer spending. But so do you think the Fed's going to have to tighten more, to Powell's point? Do you think it'll, it'll hurt the progress on inflation? I think at this point, uh, further tightening is a distinct risk. Our baseline expectation is in line with that of the Federal Reserve that the Fed can get further traction uh, on, on financial conditions by holding this rate at 5.3 percent for some time. And as they hold the rate, there will be further headwinds to economic activity. And frankly, that's supported by this run-up in 10-year Treasury yields that we've seen that uh, the Fed has tightened at the short end, and that's pulling back on financial conditions generally. And uh, now that's manifesting itself after a long while in a higher 10-year Treasury yield, which indeed, as many Fed speakers have said, uh, yeah. that 10-year Treasury yield approaching 5 percent, that's doing some of the Fed's work yeah. for it as well. So, Lisa, what does all that mean for equity investors? Because the, the stronger economic data and consumption data is good for the soft landing narrative and for earnings, but then it also could potentially result in these higher Treasury yields and more Fed action, which is not great, usually for stocks. Yeah, look, I think that the fundamental issue for uh, equity investors is what multiple do you pay uh, for what appears to be mid-cycle earnings? I think that there was a thesis for a good part of this year that the the uh, bear market rally has been uh, based on is that we were at trough earnings and earnings are going to accelerate from here. Uh, if, in fact, economic growth is as strong as the numbers uh, that we're currently seeing, if that persists uh, and we get the earnings growth that's forecast, which for the next two years is about 12 percent each year, uh, you're going to look at multiples, at price earnings multiples that come down. Uh, investors have to remember, you know, it is very hard for uh, us to be in a world where 5% interest rate uh, competes with a 20 times uh, forward price earnings multiple. And so, uh, yes, earnings may be much better, uh, but price earnings multiples, I think, you know, when you typically have a 5% interest rates look a lot more like 16 and a half to 17 times uh, earnings. And so in aggregate, you end up uh, having an index that gets very stuck uh, trading sideways.